What's up YouTube, Cody Bidlow with AthleteX coming at you with another video. So today I'm kicking off a new series called Supplements That Actually Work. I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time researching supplements, buying supplements, taking supplements, and finding that A, most don't work, and B, some do work, but oftentimes the claims are a little bit over the top. So my goal is to provide you with some information that can be useful to you depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, what your goals might be with supplementation, and bring you some supplements that I think are useful, can be worth the money, and something that you might want to try. Now, I am going to include affiliate links in the description below where you can click on, go see the supplements, maybe buy them. If you do buy them, I will make a little bit of money, but mind you, it's very small, and it's just one of those things that I try to do to help fund these videos, give me some motivation to do them, and in the end, I'm probably not going to make any money off of it. But hey, they're there, and there's my disclaimer. So when it comes to supplements, oftentimes the standard of evidence for why you should use them or the evidence that backs up the claims that the companies make about them, the standard of evidence for that is often quite low. You know, a company will put out a low-quality study talking about their product. They'll make all these claims, and they'll say, oh, it's amazing, you know, it's the best thing ever. But usually they're not very true. So in order to find the ones that actually work, you got to sift through a number of studies, look at how were they done? Was it a cohort study? Was it a double-blind placebo study? Who funded it? Were these effects repeatable? Those are often the things that you need to look at if you're going to trust one source of information over another. Fortunately, because of the internet, we're able to examine this in a little bit more depth. And when we make buying decisions, such as related to supplements or some type of training equipment, or a coach we're gonna use, or whatever, the internet can be a great tool. Now, if you go down the route of looking at articles by Dr. Oz and other people who their sole intent is to sell the supplements, you might find information that sounds great, but is not necessarily as reliable as they may make it seem. So just a word of caution, whether you're listening to me, listening to someone else, take the information with a grain of salt. You can do a little bit, bit of research on your own, and that can help confirm whether or not you want to actually go through with spending money on something or ingesting something that you think is going to have some specific effect that you're looking for. While oftentimes these claims made by supplement companies can be false, there are in fact some supplements that actually do work. And those are the supplements that I want to talk about and the ones that I want to bring to your attention so that in the event that these could possibly help you in one way or another, you have some idea about what they do what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to work, and the information that shows that they actually do work. The one we're going to be talking about today is called Rhodiola rosea, but we'll just say Rhodiola for short. So what effects of Rhodiola are backed by evidence? First, Rhodiola has been shown to increase or improve endurance exercise performance. In one study in humans, time to exhaustion was improved by 2 to 7%, depending on the person and VO2 max improved by around 4%. Now these don't seem like extremely strong percentages of improvement, but when you're thinking about someone who might be trying to improve for a competition where if they improve by 1%, they'll go from not qualifying for the next meet to qualifying or something like that, then one, two, three, four to 10% improvements can be very significant. Now in someone who is a trained athlete, these effects are probably gonna be less. But if you're someone who's just getting started, it might be something that could help your endurance performance. Second, rhodiola appears to increase ATP in skeletal muscle. This study that shows a 24% increase in time to exhaustion in rats was connected to the ability of rhodiola to improve the concentration or increase the concentration of ATP in skeletal muscles. Now, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's the core compound of energy in the body. And if you increase ATP levels, you can assume that that ATP is going to be readily available for your body to use as energy. Rhodiola appears to have antidepressant effects, which in today's day and age, there's a lot of people affected with depression at various times in their life. And while we want to find things that can help us with depression, there's a stigma against taking antidepressants themselves, like the pharmaceutical drugs. I'm not saying there's anything bad with that. You can make that decision on your own. But... I think we all know that there is a stigma behind taking antidepressants. So anytime there is something that is herbal that does show consistent 
positive effects on depression, it's something that I think warrants further inquiry. In one study, rhodiola was compared with sertraline, which is the generic name for Zoloft. And in this study, rhodiola was not as effective as sertraline or Zoloft, which I think we should all expect that an herb will not be as effective as a pharmaceutical drug that has had a lot of money put into it to produce specific effects. But what they did find was that rhodiola did have antidepressant effects and it had nearly no negative effects. So it had positive effects, but without the negative effects. Whereas when you take SSRIs, SNRIs, or other antidepressant pharmaceutical drugs, you're often getting a benefit while also having a lot of negative effects. This is in no way a suggestion that you should drop your antidepressants and start taking rhodiola and you're gonna, you know, all of a sudden feel great. But it is something that if you suffer from low grade depression or maybe are looking for something that can supplement your use of pharmaceutical drugs, that could be something that you could talk to your doctor about. Or say you're just feeling down, you don't have clinical depression, you know, you're, you're still able to get up in the morning, go to work, hang out with your friends, but you're just feeling a little down, maybe rhodiola could help. Additionally, a review study was done that looked at a wide range of studies of rhodiola on depression, and they found that the effects were consistent enough to warrant further investigation into specifically the antidepressant effects of rhodiola. This study was quoted as saying that rhodiola demonstrates multi-target effects on various levels of the regulation of cell response to stress, affecting various components of the neuroendocrine, neurotransmitter receptor, and molecular network associated with possible beneficial effects on mood. As such, they suggested that more studies should be done on rhodiola relating to depression and mood. So this is something worth looking into if you find that you're a little moody or maybe slightly depressed. Like I said, if you're clinically depressed, you got to talk to your doctor. Don't just go taking supplements and hoping that it's going to help. Also, rhodiola is shown to help stress related to exams. So if you're in college and you're studying for an important exam, that's a stressful time. You're probably staying up later, you might be eating less, you're probably thinking about it all day, and all those factors come together to make you feel generally stressed out. Well, rhodiola has shown to be specifically effective with exam-type stress. A double-blind, placebo-controlled study of low-dose rhodiola extract showed that the most significant improvement in the SHR5 group, which SHR5 is an extract of rhodiola, was seen in physical fitness, mental fatigue, and neuromotoric test. This was done with low doses, and they found that the people were performing better on these mental and physical tests, and that they also said that if they were to increase the doses, they would expect that those improvements would be more significant. But they just wanted to test low dose rhodiola to see what is sort of the lowest threshold at which we can see some positive effects, because that's usually a good place to start. You don't just wanna go blasting something and then see what happens. You wanna start at the lower level and then titrate up from there to see, okay, where do the effects become most prominent? Where do they start to kind of fall off the wagon? This study specifically shows that low-dose rhodiola can help with mental stress, physical stress, and your performance during times of stress. So how should you take rhodiola? If you're looking for something that is a general anti-stress, anti-fatigue compound that you want to take on a regular basis, say you have chronic fatigue syndrome, or you're in a period of time where you're just by circumstances in your life, you're going to have to be stressed for a period of time, say, because you're not able to sleep as much because you're working more and going to school or whatever. 50 milligrams is a good dose to take on a regular basis. If you're taking it chronically, 50 milligrams is a good place to get effects without any negative effects. In times where acute stress management is required, say you're dealing with something in your life that is lasting for a short period of time, hits you out of nowhere, and you just need something to deal with that stress for a period of time that is relatively short, then higher dosages can be warranted. Generally, 280 to 680 milligrams is the low to high range on acute usage, um, but you would not want to take that in the long run, and you would not want to go over that 680 milligram mark. As with anything, err on the side of caution, take less, see how you fare, and then go from there. As with any supplement, I don't advise you taking it forever all the time. Whether you're exercising, eating certain foods, doing certain day-to-day -day activities, or taking certain supplements, whatever you do, you need to have some variety in your life. Otherwise, things get stagnant, your body gets used to it, your mind gets used to it, and things lose their effect over time. 
So if you're going to take rhodiola, take it for a period of time, then stop. As with anything, I think that's the best way to go. If you're exercising in a certain way, do it for a while, then take a break, then get back into it. If you're eating certain foods, rotate them in. Don't eat the same dinner every day or don't have the same weekly eating schedule every single week. Your chicken and broccoli can change up, okay? You don't need to be tied mentally, emotionally, or physically to the same thing. So if you are going to take a supplement, switch it out over time, rotate it in, rotate it out, and this is a good way to make sure that you're going to get the positive effects from it without the negatives. So if you'd like to give Rhodiola a try, you can check the links down in the description. Click those, it'll take you to some websites that I suggest. Otherwise, you can go to your local health food store, find it there. Um, if you have any concerns about this, feel free to talk to your doctor. None of this is medical advice. I'm just sharing some information that can be widely found out on the internet um, that if you took the time to research it, you would find this information as well. But because I make videos, because I like to share information, I decided I would make a video about it. So if you have taken rhodiola, please let us know how you responded. Leave a comment. Let us know what effects you found. Did you find effects? Did you find that it had no effects? Did you try different brands? What did you use it for? All those things. I'm interested to hear. Other people I'm sure are interested to hear, so please share that below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. That helps my videos come up in the search rankings better. And uh, if you like Athlete X, that's a very easy way to support. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to do that. That'll keep you updated on when I post a new video. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for this one. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch me in my next videos. And hopefully you learned a little bit. And I really hope that you have a great day. Thanks.